Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Musoff again. Uh, we're going to continue solving radical equations today, but we're going to do some more complicated examples. So you'll see today's goal, it says, I will solve equations with radicals using my knowledge of quadratics, and I will check for extraneous solutions. So they are going to be a little more complicated because we're going to use um, some of our methods for solving a quadratic. Specifically, we're going to use factoring, although if factoring didn't work, we would also use quadratic formula. Those would be the two methods that we'd want to focus on. All right, so let's try a couple examples. Here it says solve and check for extraneous solutions. One little side note is the directions don't have to say check for extraneous solutions. Technically, that's a given, right? We should always be checking for extraneous solutions when we're dealing with radical equations. All right, but just in case you forgot, we like to add that in. So for number one, it says x plus 2 equals the square root of 9x. All right, now when it comes to solving these equations, if you remember from the last uh, video that talked about this, we always want to get the radical by itself. We want to get rid of anything outside of the radical. Well, my radical's on the right side, and there's nothing outside of it, so that means the radical is by itself. And so once, there's, once everything on the outside is gone, the next step is to actually get rid of the radical. And the way we do that is whatever kind of radical it is, we raise both sides to the same exponent. So what kind of radical is this? Hopefully you said it's a square root, right? When there's no number there, it's an imaginary 2, okay? So since there's an imaginary 2 there, that means if I want to get rid of it, I'm going to have to raise both sides to the second power. Now pay attention to those parentheses, all right? Because on the left side, that means I'm not just raising x to the second power or 2 to the second power. I'm raising the entire x plus 2 expression to the second power. And remember, when you raise something to the second power or you square it, that means you're multiplying it by itself. So x plus 2 squared is really saying to do x plus 2 times x plus 2. And that means I'm going to have to FOIL that out. All right, you'll get a lot of people who will accidentally just try and say, oh, x plus 2 squared, that's x squared and 2 squared. But you can't distribute that exponent when there's addition or subtraction. It just doesn't mean the same thing. Um, so you have to write it out using the definition. All right, so I'd have x plus 2 times x plus 2, which I could then distribute. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Two, 2 times x is another 2x. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, and if I... Sorry about that. Um, if I combine these like terms here, I end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Right. On the other side, remember, the whole reason we did this exponent was to get rid of the radical. So on the other side, that's all that should happen. This exponent and this radical go away. So I'm just left with 9x. All right, now this is the part where it gets a little different than the other problems we did. This is not a linear equation anymore. So we can't just say, oh, get x by itself, done. Right? This is a quadratic. Right? Anytime you see an x squared as the highest exponent, that's a quadratic equation. If we are going to solve a quadratic equation, we're going to have to get it to equal 0 first. And then we're going to solve it by either factoring or using the quadratic formula. Frankly, whichever you prefer. In my opinion, factoring should be easier when it's possible to do it. Right? So not everything can be factored. But most of the time in the problems we give you, you should try factoring first. Because a lot of times they are going to be factorable and it will be a lot quicker. All right, so first step, get it to equal 0. That means I need to get this 9x over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. And I'm going to put it with its like term so I remember to actually combine there. All right, so that'll get me x squared, positive 4x minus 9x is negative 5x. And then I still have the plus 4, and now it equals 0. All right. Once it equals 0... Uh, that means it's time to either factor or use quadratic formula. If you can factor it, that means, remember, you should be able to find something that multiplies to this end number here, and where the insides and outsides would add to this middle number here. Okay, so it goes add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. All right. um, I'm going to set it up. I know x squared, that means it has to be x and x, multiplies to 4, well, that's either 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. 
2 and 2 is not going to give me 5, but 1 and 4 could, as long as they're both negative. So I would have minus 1 and minus 4. And then all I need to do to actually solve is set each one of these equal to 0 and solve. So I should end up getting x equals 1 as one of my answers, and x equals 4 as the other answer. And before I circle these, just like the last time, we do have to check our answers. So off to the side here, I'm going to write check so I don't forget. All right, now these problems, again, a little more complicated. You have two spots you're going to check your answer in, right, that you have to plug your answer into. So I'm going to start with x equals 1. And that means I should have a 1 plus 2 on the left side equals the square root of 9 times 1. That's what I want to check. And these you can, again, use your calculator, but a lot of times they're pretty quick to do by hand. 1 plus 2 is 3. And the square root of 9 times 1, that's the square root of 9. So does 3 equal the square root of 9? Yes. All right, 3 equals 3. So that's a good answer. I'm going to go ahead and box it up. And then I'll check x equals 4. All right, in these problems, since a lot of times you end up with two answers, there's a chance both answers work. There's a chance only one answer will work. And there's a chance that neither answer works. So you really have to check. All right. Again, I'm going to plug this 4 into my equation for the x's. So 4 plus 2. Does it equal the square root of 9 times 4? 4 plus 2, that's 6. 9 times 4, that's the square root of 36. So does 6 equal the square root of 36? Yes, it does. 6 equals 6. So there's my other answer. So in this problem, we actually ended up with both answers working out. Okay. So the big new part of today's lesson is this part right here. Right? When you have a quadratic, and it's only for quadratics that you would do this, all right? or I suppose cubics, right? but that would just be factoring, not quadratic formula. But the ones you're going to see are really going to be quadratics, and that's when you have to do just a couple extra steps. Okay, let's try one more example here. Make sure we've got it down. So I've got x minus 5 equals the square root of x plus 1. So once again, the first step is to get the square root, the radical, by itself. Nothing's outside of the radical, so I'm already good there. So that means to get rid of the radical, I'm going to raise both sides to the second exponent. Okay. And again, raising this left side to the second exponent means I'm doing x minus 5 times x minus 5. All right, we actually have to multiply that out. So I'll get x times x is x squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. All right, so that ends up with uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25. And be careful with positives and negatives because if you get a little, if you make a little mistake there, it won't factor, and then it'll seem like it's a super complicated problem, and it's not meant to be. All right, the only complicated part is meant to be at the end, you should be able to factor it, and that's how you'll solve. Okay, on the right side, the square and the square root cancel out, so I'm just left with x plus 1. All right, now again, we have a quadratic, x squared, so that means I really need one side to equal 0, and the easiest way to do that is to get rid of the stuff on the right side. So I'm going to subtract x give it to that like term, and then I'm going to subtract 1 and give it to that like term. All right, because x minus x is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I know I'll end up with equals here. All right, again, over here, be careful. Uh, oops, sorry, negative 10x uh, minus x, that's like negative 10 minus 1, that's negative 11. And positive 25 minus 1, that'll just be positive 24. So in order to solve this, I need two numbers. I'm going to try factoring first, always, right, because it's much easier if it works. So I need two numbers that add to negative 11 and multiply to 24. So I always start by trying to find those multiplying numbers because there are less of them. All right, 24, that could be 1 and 24. Nope, that's not going to work. 2 and 12, don't think so. Uh, 3 and 8, oh, there we go. 3 and 8, that could give me 11 as long as they're both negative. So I'll have x minus 3, and then x minus 8. And remember, if you're ever not sure you factored right, just multiply it back together. It should give you x squared minus 11x plus 24. 
right? and it only takes about a minute to do that. If I go ahead and finish solving, I'm going to get x equals 3, and then I'm going to get x equals 8. And again, before I circle them, i got to check my answer. So off to the side here, I'm going to write check. Or check, if you want to put the exclamation point. Your call. <laughs> All right, so I have x equals 3 I'm going to check, and x equals 8 I'm going to check. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, uh, x equals, oops, sorry, x equals 3, not x equals 1. What am I doing? There we go. And again, feel free to use your calculator if you need to, or if you just want to double check yourself. But I think a lot of times these are relatively simple to plug back in. Uh, 3 minus 5, right, I'm just plugging it in for x, equals the square root, oops, need that equal sign, equals the square root of 3 plus 1. Remember, negatives do matter here, so please be careful. 3 minus 5, that's negative 2. And then I get the square root of 4. Well, unfortunately, the square root of 4 equals positive 2, not negative 2. All right, and so that means that is not an answer because those don't equal the same thing. So I'm going to cross out x equals 3. That's what we would call an extraneous solution. All right, x equals 8 on the other hand. Let's check. 8 minus 5. Does that equal the square root of 8 plus 1? Well, 8 minus 5, that's 3. Does that equal the square root of 9? Yes, it does. All right, so this is an example where only one of the answers ends up working out. Again, it's possible for neither answer to work out. If that were the case, you would just say no solution. All right. So that's it. That's solving radical equations. Hopefully these two examples made sense. Um, if you have any, feel free to write down questions and talk with your teacher about uh, getting those answered. All right. Thanks for tuning in.